Hi, welcome to the Louise Janetta YouTube channel. This time I'm doing a demo on um, turning papers into leather type stuff um, using the Momogami process, which creases papers so that it strengthens it. And the folds and stuff act like almost like a concertina thing and allow flexibility in the paper, which they wouldn't it wouldn't have without this creasing. And I'm using slightly different techniques. The end one is the best one. But the rest is to show you that I have actually tried other stuff and to almost help you, if you want to try them, to sort of see what the results are. So you get some sort of experience about the whole thing because I didn't just come up with a result. I sort of found it by doing all the other things as well. So it is really good. The, the papers, the finished products are really lovely and can be used either sewn or used in book binding for book covers. They can make things. I'm going to make a few things and show you them having been sewn in the next video. Well, I hope it's of some use. I hope you enjoy it. Good luck. Enjoy. Right, I've got just an ordinary piece of card. I can't remember where I got it from. Um, but it's not an expensive card. It's not even that thick. And I painted it, this is another piece that's a yellow, and I painted it in a green acrylic with some bonding agents in it, and then I momigamied it. So there's a blue one that I momigamied, and it's just interesting to show you how much the whole thing shrinks. Look, that's that much smaller than the originals. It's unbelievable, isn't it? That's only been momigamied for about 10 minutes. And then it is, I've momigamied it. And this one, the blue one, I did with just the acrylic on the outside. So the inside is the original piece of cardboard. I did two others. This, in fact I'll show you the colours of the cards. This piece was a piece of pink card, just like that. With red acrylic on the back of it, red and rust and a bit of orange. And then Mummy Garmid, and you can see it, the oil is coming through on this one. There's, I put mineral oil on that one. Look how much that one has shrunk. But I put mineral oil on that one, both front and back. And honestly, the feel of this is absolutely unbelievable. It feels like leather. Not quite sure what I would use that for. Because again, I don't trust the oil barrier to the glues. You know, all the glues are acrylic based. If I had an oil-based glue, it would be okay. Okay, so there's that one is the red one. This one was just creamy colour. That one was the creamy colour and that's the oil, what it goes like with the oil. That was painted with a sort of plum sort of colour. I was sort of basically sticking to leather type colours. And these I'm just going to leave in the sun to dry for a bit. Well, for a long time really, and see what they go like. And I have done others in the past, but and they just go beautiful. That was on cartridge paper that was then separated and you've got this really fluid, completely fabric type thing. Right, the reason why I didn't put oil on this is because I could stick either this together face to face and you have something really strong. And so long as I don't put any oil on it at this point, I could use that to then stick onto things, whatever I want to. Equally, I can use that to, to say, cover a book when I do the book covering for book covers, your journal or whatever, but also it's much, much more usable as it is, I think, before it's got the oil on it. So I'm leaving some of them without the oil on it and then when I've done whatever I like with it, I'm either going to oil it with the mineral oil or I will put a beeswax on it. So there you go, that's bits of lovely momogami card. I'll have to find out for you the weight of this card. The other thing I thought about these lovely leather look type things is that when they're dry, when all the oil's dry, when you've done with whatever you want to do with it and waxed it or oiled it, you could then even use shoe polish on it and buff it up afterwards. And this surface is really strong and will get stronger and stronger the more finish you put on it. I understand this from my furniture renovation that I used to do. I used to be a traditional upholsterer and renovate chairs. And of course we were feeding woods 
and feeding leathers. We used to stain and buff up leathers. I've been experimenting with doing my Mugami and how the different papers respond and just what you can use them for. And this is just a, I thought I'd just try a piece of card with shoe polish on it. Rather than the mineral oil, I think the last time was uh, acrylic on paper and then oiled. Well, this is shoe polish on paper and then I will monogami it when it's a bit drier so I don't just spread it onto the two sides because I want one side clean and I was just seeing what the shoe polish did to the paper and presumably when I'm so impatient I didn't want to just rub this on but presumably you could just get a cloth and rub this on so you're not damaging the surface of the paper quite so much. Yeah, that's nice, with it thicker. The whole principle of the momigami, isn't it, is that you seal one side of it, and traditionally it was a konyaku paste, and then, I don't know why, but you look on the internet and so many people suggest oils. I suppose it's to make the paper more supple so it's easier to fold the oils, but it also seems to really nourish the paper. And um, again, if you can use that product, the nourished oiled paper, as is, that's really interesting. And I was thinking this wax would perhaps just wax on one side for a start, so that the other side is still very susceptible to uh, water-based glues or paints. Whereas once, if you oil it, the oil seems to seep right through very quickly. Whereas this really, really does just sit on the surface. I must admit, it's probably best to tape this down so you don't get the wax on both sides. And I love that. I really like that look. You know, the, the red on the blue. No, I bet red on yellow would be lovely. It's not red, this is brown, but it's obviously a brownie red. And you can get shoe polishes cheap from, you know, pound shops. So, put that on. I am going to turn the paper over to keep it clean. Because I want to buff this up without getting too much on the back of it. So that it actually really does form some sort of a, a finish. Oh, too much. But I do... Maybe sort of let it dry a bit and then buff it. Got a soft cloth and really buff. And if you want something that's not got a colour in it, you'd use a, a beeswax. Right, so now I'm just going to start mommy gumming this. Take my gloves off so I've got clean hands. I won't put you through this. I'll do some and then I'll show you the results because obviously this takes quite a long time. This is not the easiest thing to, to mummy gummy. Maybe I'm just not being very patient, but it's the edges of the paper are very stiff and brittle. So it's not, it's actually tearing quite easily on the edges. But if you had a bit more patience than me, I'm sure people could do it could manage it or it might be better to momigami it first and then wax it I mean the feel of the paper is absolutely gorgeous right so I shall keep on messing with that and not bore you watching it the other thing as well is that I ended up using this konyaku paste which is or konyaku powder which is the traditional stuff that the Japanese used on the mulberry paper in order to make these stronger, stronger papers. Konyaku paste forms a layer that is slightly waterproof and windproof but still allows the papers to breathe and I'm going to try it on the mulberry paper as well but in this case I've used it on cardboard and on um, cartridge papers. Okay you'll see the result Oh, and there's a couple of things I've done as well because the idea is with the konyaki glue is to seal one side of the paper and to still allow it to breathe 
and to seal it so that you can crease it and it'll make creases and hold creases. But you can use other products that'll do that and in this case I've used some acrylics which I've done in the past and again they both have really different effects and it depends what you want. I mean the acrylics actually add a strengthening, a strengthening aspect because it creates a um, very plastic layer but equally the Konyaku paste is supposed to strengthen it all as well. It's supposed to be a strong elastic finish the Konyaku paste. What I really liked as well was the Konyaku paste was translucent and allowed the colours of the papers to come through so that when you did actually put some shoe polish on there was a lovely mixture between the translucency of the colour of the shoe polish and the papers and the Konyaku paste. So each thing offers its own potentials. There you go. Right, and then get a soft cloth. Now I don't want this to rub off, rub off. But I might just leave that to dry because I like that. I don't want to lose it. Those lovely marks. And I think if I polish that up, it's going to rub off the marks. I mean, it's quite nice, but I quite like the, the, the greater contrast. No, I, I would leave that in. Oh, it's so effective. Maybe that. Well, I absolutely love that. I wonder how much more you could work on it. Let's try another bit of this. Oh yeah, that just stays in the grooves again. That is such a nice effect. Oh well, there's one way of doing it. I mean, this is orange card. You could use white card, couldn't you? And have the contrast a lot greater. And then this is when you see how important it is how you fold the paper, you know, as to what marks you're going to make on it. Like there's horrible three or four there that are really tight, uh, liney. I don't like them. I prefer the all over marks. When they're too liney like so, they look like a scar. I think that's amazing. There you go. That was Konyaku paste on card. That's a blemish of oil. Polished with shoe polish. Yay! <laughs> Now I have a cream piece of paper which I have put Konyaku paste on and then creased up monogami and I'm now rubbing different colours of shoe polish onto it and of course the, the um, polish is getting caught in the cracks that you've made. Ah, and it's really interesting like that polish is too liquid and it's actually smoothing out the paper so you lose some of the creases so the thing to do is to do it when it is actually quite thick too thin it'll smooth the paper out look you can really see that's been smoothed out I mean it's quite nice on this piece I'm not too worried I have a lovely purple which I'm just going to mix in with some other color so it's not too dense I need some more shoe polish now But what happens is that the papers take on this gorgeous effect. Well, that spoils it so much putting on that softer stuff. I'll, I might be able to monogami it again and then um, add some more polish on later on. And I've found that you leave it to dry and then at a later date come and buff it or even put some more polish on. And it has this beautiful effect, the same as adding beeswax to a piece of paper. But I'm going to invest in all sorts of different coloured shoe polish. And these can be used for book covers, they can be used for collaging. Once they're dry, once the beeswax set, all you get is a sort of waxy finish. Oh, I'm so disappointed there. I'm just going to have to hope that that creases up again. You know, because I've lost it. But it doesn't matter. I mean, it's just a... I'm just trying this out. I know what not to do next time. There you go. Right, that was one done. 
on that colour. And that was done on that orange, look. Just an orange piece of card. And that one was that colour. It's really effective, isn't it? And the paper, of course, feels so nice in itself. Oh, and that one's been buffed off a bit. That one's got a bit of a sheen on it because I've buffed up the polish, but honestly, not much. So I'll see how quickly this dries. And you can buff it up. Oh, and that was a lovely one done on blue card. I'll put the link to the card. It's from Turner's again. I get a lot of stuff from Turner's.